Hello everybody, welcome back again to another episode of the Truth Seekers channel and today uh, book the book of Enoch section 3 um, the book of the heavenly luminaries well chapter 72 the book of the revolutions of the lights of heaven each as it is according to their classes according to their period of rule and their times according to their names and places of origin and according to the, their months that Uriel the holy angel who was with me and is their leader showed to me and he showed me all their regulations exactly as they are for each year of the world and for each and forever until the new creation shall be made which will last forever so Uriel the holy angel was the leader and not Michael and this is the first law of the light the light called the Sun its rising is in the gates of heaven and that are towards east and its setting is in the western gates of heaven and I saw six gates from which the Sun rises and six gates in which the Sun sets and the moon also rises and sets in those gates and the leaders of the stars together with those whom they lead there are six in the east and six in the west all exactly in place one next to the other and there are many windows to the south and the north of those gates and first there rises the greater light named the sun and its disk is like the disk of heaven and the whole of it is full of fire which gives light and warmth the wind blows the chariots on which it ascends and the sun goes down in the sky and returns through the north in order to reach the east and is led so that it comes to the appropriate gate and shines in the sky in this way it rises in the first month in the large gate namely it rises through the fourth of, of those six gates that are towards the east and in that fourth gate through which the sun rises in the first month there are 12 window openings from which whenever they are opened flames come out when the sun rises in heaven it goes out through that fourth gate for 30 days and exactly in the fourth gate in the west of heaven it goes down and in those days the day grows daily longer and the night grows nightly shorter until the 30th morning and on that day the day becomes longer than the night by a double part and the day amounts to exactly 10 parts and the night amounts to 8 parts hmm. and the sun rises from that fourth gate and sets in the fourth gate and returns to the fifth gate in the east for 30 mornings and it rises from it and sets in the fifth gate and then the day becomes longer by two parts and day amounts to 11 parts and the night becomes shorter and amounts to seven parts and the sun returns to the east and comes to the sixth gate and rises and sets in the sixth gate for 31 mornings because of its sign and on that day the day becomes longer than the night and the day becomes double the night and the day amounts to 12 parts and the night becomes shorter and amounts to six parts and the sun rises up so that the day may grow shorter and the night longer and the sun returns to the east and comes to the sixth gate and rises from it and sets for 30 mornings and when 30 mornings have been completed the day becomes shorter by exactly one part and the day amounts to 11 parts and the night to 7 parts and the sun goes out from the west through that sixth gate and goes to the east and rises to the in the fifth gate for 30 mornings and it sets in the west again in the fifth gate in the west 
On that day the day becomes shorter by two parts, and the day amounts to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And the sun rises from that fifth gate and sits in the fifth gate in the west, and rises in the fourth gate for thirty-one mornings because of its sign, and sets in the west. On that day the day becomes equal with the night and is of equal length. And the night amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from that gate and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third gate for thirty mornings and sets in the west in the third gate. And the sun rises from that third gate and sets in the third gate in the west and returns to the east. And the sun rises in the second gate in the east for thirty mornings, and likewise it sets in the second gate in the west of heaven. And on that day the night amounts to eleven parts, and the day to seven parts. And the sun rises on that day from the second gate and sets in the west in the second gate, and returns to the east to the first gate for thirty-one mornings then sets in the west in the first gate, and on that day the night becomes longer, and becomes double the day, and the night amounts to exactly twelve parts, and the day to six parts, and with this the sun has completed the divisions of its journey, and it turns back again along these divisions of its journey, and it comes through that first gate for thirty mornings, and sets in the west op opposite to it, op opposite it. And on that day the night becomes shorter in length by one part, and amounts to eleven parts, and the day to seven parts. And the sun returns and comes to the second gate, in the east, and it returns along those divisions of its journey for thirty mornings, rising and setting. And on that day the night becomes shorter in length, and the night amounts to ten parts, and the day to eight parts. And on that day the sun rises from the second gate and sets in the west, and returns to the east and rises in the third gate for thirty-one mornings, and sets in the west of the sky. And on that day the night becomes shorter and amounts to nine parts, and the day amounts to nine parts, and the night becomes equal with the day, and the year amounts to exactly three hundred and sixty-four days. And the length of the day and the night, and the shortness of the day and the night, they are different because of the journey of the sun. Because of it, its journey becomes daily longer and nightly shorter. And this is the law and the journey of the sun and its return as often as it returns, sixty times it returns and rises. That is the great eternal light, which forever and ever is named the sun. And this that rises is the great light, which is named after its appearance of the Lord, as the Lord commanded. And thus it rises and sets, it neither decreases nor rests, but runs day and night in its chariot, and its light is seven times brighter than that of the moon, but in size the two are equal. The moon and the sun are equal in size according to the book of Enoch. This was something I already proved before even reading this. And after this law I saw another law for the lesser light named the moon. Let's check that again. And its light is seven times brighter than that of the moon, but in size the two are equal. Wow, wow, wow. And its disk is like the disk of the sun, and the wind blows its chariot on which it rides. And in fixed measure lights, light is given to it. And every month its rising and setting change. And its days are as the days of the sun, and when its light is uniformly full, it is a seventh part of the light of the sun. And thus it rises, and its first phase is towards the east. It rises on the thirtieth morning, and on that day it appears and becomes for you the first phase of the moon. 
not the third phase of the moon, but the first phase of the moon. On the 30th morning, together with the sun in the gate through which the sun rises, and a half, with the seventh part, and its entire disk is empty without light, except for a seventh part, a fourteenth part of its light. And on the day that it receives a seventh part, a seventh part and a half of its light, its light amounts to a seventh and a seventh part and a half. It sets with the sun, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with it and receives a half of one part of light. And on that night, at the beginning of its morning, at the beginning of the moon's day, the moon sets with the sun and it's dark and is dark on that night in six and seven parts and a half. And it rises on that day with exactly a seventh part, goes out, recedes from the rising of the sun and becomes bright on the remainder of its day in the other six and seven parts. Wow. So this is how the sun and the moon rises and sets according to according to a fixed pattern. And the best part is that the moon and the sun are equal in size. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I will continue with the book of Enoch and thumbs up.